Okay, um, welcome to our presentation on copyright issues on campus. Um, I'm David Wang, student experience librarian, and um, I'm working with my colleague, um, Renee Rapp, who's our archivist and scholarly communications librarian. Uh, we'll be introducing everyone or refreshing everyone on a few important points relating to copyright. So um, copyright issues have evolved um, over time, but for the most part, um, uh, laws have been written with pretty broad provisions so to allow for uh, interpretation. Libraries and educational institutions are given um, a little more freedom to use copyrighted works under certain provisions of copyright law. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so today, uh, we're gonna run through some of the key provisions of copyright law uh, as it applies to colleges and universities in our first third of our presentation. Uh, then we'll provide a few practical Q&A examples and scenarios. And finally, uh, we'll go over some alternative options to, copy, to using copyrighted material, specifically OER and uh, where to find them. Um, next slide, please. Um, so this is just our legal disclaimer. Um, we are absolutely not copyright lawyers. And please um, take this presentation with a grain of salt. And um, if you have any particular um, questions relating to copyright law, please use the reference uh, copyright.gov and speak with Renee um, if you need any assistance uh, using copyrighted materials on campus. Um, next slide. So this is the uh, .gov site. Uh, it includes cases, um, history, and development of uh, copyright laws. Um, I cannot reiterate um, enough that these are the laws and copyright issues should be assessed on a case-by-case -case basis. Um, you as an individual should gauge uh, risk level in any, in any type of scenario where it involves copyright. Um, we, the library staff, uh, can provide recommendations, but please uh, check with legal counsel on campus or consult with the codified laws whenever you are in doubt. Um, next slide, please. Uh, so the copyright law uh, sections and statutes, um, we're just gonna uh, go over these particular four. Um, the three in um, the three in green are particularly in, uh, important to focus on. To focus on, um, so uh, one hundred two is just discussing works protected by copyright law. Uh, keep in mind, not all works are protected by copyright law. Um, uh, some works are in the public domain, uh, and works in the public domain have expired copyright, uh, never have had copyright, or were never renewed. Um, please check with uh, Duke University's Public Domain Center and Cornell University's Public Domain site. Um, it, it'll be uh, listed or available on the copyright resources document that we provide um, in uh, connected with this presentation. Um, 
Again, each of these three statutes in green are key elements of the law, which will help provide a legal framework um, to help you defend, to help scholars, faculty, and students defend their usage of copyrighted works. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so the first one is section 102. This is a very um, basic concept of what does copyright protect and what does it not protect. So we're looking at the column on the left, um, and these are tangible works. Um, they could be uh, literary, music, um, even uh, graphic and sculptural works. Uh, another popular one that, uh, are films. Um, there could be archival material, uh, sound recordings. These are all types of works that uh, are under copyright law. Um, and uh, next slide, please. So um, this is one of the most important statutes or uh, uh, it's section 107, fair use. And um, uh, I, I wanted to present it in a way uh, using a mnemonic device because I am a big believer that it helps with recall. So consider um, P-A-I-N, pain, uh, associated with a lawsuit if you don't remember to stand firm on your fair use uh, principles, um, which are the following four. Uh, one, are you using this uh, copyrighted work for educational purposes, which I hope you are uh, naturally, since you're here at SUNY Maritime. Um, the second is how much are you using? Um, it can't be too much. Uh, when you're going more than half the book, you are definitely using too much of the copyrighted work. Uh, third, um, think about what the copyright holder's uh, profits are. Uh, if you are, um, if you're infringing or uh, affecting their potential market or uh, value that they could uh, draw from their work, then um, that is a problem and you should question if uh, what you're doing is legal. And um, four, which I'm gonna take just a little more time in going through, is the nature of the work. Um, sometimes we um, look at satire or parodies, like I'm gonna take a, a movie example. Um, if you remember in the 90s, um, there was uh, the Scream uh, horror movie series. Well, uh, in 2000, there was a parody and um, it was called Scary Movie. And basically it was just a remake of uh, the Scream series. And um, of course it was not a, uh, a lawsuit was not presented because um, it, it fell under par parody, which connects with for uh, nature of the work. So um, let's move on to section 108. Um, next slide, please. Um, so section 108 is um, what um, Kyle Courtney, um, he's a noted lawyer, copyright scholar and librarian calls a library superpower. Um, it allows libraries and archives to reproduce or photocopy um, copyrighted works under certain conditions. And the conditions are listed. Um, generally, um, it's non-commercial use, educational use. Um, when you make photocopies, you need to include a notice of copyright, especially if you are passing them along to colleagues or um, 
or even um, trans transmitting it to anyone else, um, it needs to include a notice of copyright. And in cases where in we're trying to preserve uh, material that is in our archives, we're allowed to reproduce and photocopy fragile and uh, unique items. So this is what uh, Section 108 does to protect our um, usage of copyrighted works. Uh, next slide, please. Um, and so finally, uh, we're going to go over um, um, section 110, which is uh, um, a newer provision or statute in copyright law. It's uh, the TEACH Act. And we're not going to go over the entire section on the TEACH Act because there are um, 22 prerequisites for work to qualify, and that's a lot. Um, however, there are some important uh, pieces to keep in mind including that the work must be a legal copy of the work. Um, so, uh, you know, um, there needs to be a full citation with the work. Um, and you should probably only uh, utilize this material through um, a LMS like Blackboard, or it should only be included on an LMS like Blackboard. So, um, and um, if uh, we'll, we're going to include a checklist which summarizes uh, some of the prerequisites, and it could be found on um, the Scholarly Communications LibGuide under copyright. Um, so, th those are some of the issues. And if a work is ineligible through the TEACH Act, it may still be eligible under the fair use provision, uh, section 107. So this is just a um, quick uh, overview of copyright law and the important statutes um, that give us the ability to use copyrighted work in, in academia. Um, we're now gonna move on to my colleague Renee, who's gonna go over some uh, examples and scenarios um, that you may we may come across during um, just everyday use here in the library. So I'm going to give it to Renee now. Thanks, David. So as you said, we'll go over this section copyright on campus. We'll go over four scenarios and how you'll be using copyright in various ways for your classroom, either with ebooks or physical books or even documentary films. And remember, these laws are complicated and they should be considered on a case-by-case -case basis. So these, might, these scenarios might be something you're currently dealing with, but you should always consult with either me, the scholarly communications librarian, or with um, some of the, law, the lawyers on campus. So in this first scenario, we're gonna go over our course reserves. Um, so the scenario question is, right now I do not have access to a physical reserve. Can I ask the library to photocopy a book or chapters of the book for me? And the answer is uh, no, <laughs> we can't. Um, because we, at the beginning of the term, this term, uh, we'll no longer be putting scanned items onto our course reserve guides. Um, you, our course reserves will only include books, ebooks, and articles that are found in our catalog and in our databases. Uh, we do encourage you, if you find a physical item, to scan it um, and, upload those per and upload those PDFs directly into your Blackboard course. Or if you find items that are on our databases or our catalog, you can uh, include the permalinks onto your uh, Blackboard courses. And we do encourage you to use our self-scanning self service that we have available at the library. So in the second scenario, it's really about documentary films. Um, so in this question, I'm teaching a class on marine engineering and I want to show Spike Lee's documentary, When the Lees Broke, in my class virtually or on campus. Um, as a teacher, am I allowed to do this? And the answer is maybe. Um, so this is part of a Teach Act scenario. So if you're using this film in class, in an in-person physical classroom, you, can, you may show the entire film, but you have to let your students know what the film is and that it is under copyright law. Um, if you wanna show this film in the online class, you can use small clips, uh, true copies of the clips. So that would be a trailer that the production company produced. You can use those clips in your class. But we really encourage you to have students either rent or borrow the film and watch it on their own or use free trials that Amazon and Hulu might have 
where they can try it for a week if you tell your students what days to watch this movie. They can have it for free for a limited time and watch that film for your class. So again, this just depends on the situation. If it's online, we encourage you to use clips and ask the students to purchase or, or borrow the item. But if you're showing it in class, it has to be shown in person and within that class time period to only your students. So it really just depends. And in this third scenario, we're going to go over ebooks. So this question is, I would like multiple copies of a particular chapter of Marine Law in Motion for my GBAC course. I found this ebook using the library catalog on the ebook central database. So how can you use this ebook? Well, unfortunately, we only have one copy of this ebook, of this ebook as a textbook. And that limits the amount of downloads that you use per day. So unlike a physical copy of that book, where your students can come into the library and borrow it for a few hours, this is much more limiting. So we actually encourage you to download individual chapters of that book, and again, upload them directly into your Blackboard or use those. Um, yeah, we encourage you to do that. And it'll give your students limited access on Blackboard. So all of your students can view the same items at the same time without these limitations that they can't download or view the same item at the same time. So again, we encourage you to upload those PDFs directly into Blackboard for your students to use whenever they can. And then in our final scenario, we're going to go over interlibrary loan. So this question is, can the library request copies of two chapters from a textbook that only SUNY Buffalo owns? And then can the library make me 20 copies of those chapters? So the answer to that is yes and no. We can borrow those chapters from SUNY Buffalo through our interlibrary loan, but we cannot make photocopies of that because through section 108, we can only borrow items specifically from a library to one specific person at a time. Um, and we include that copyright notice. If you borrowed from interlibrary loan, you've probably seen it before. But there's no copyright law that allows us to make copies for you, but you as a faculty member, you can make those copies. And you can either hand them out to your in-person classes or you can upload those copies directly onto your Blackboard course. So in this final section, we're going to go over how COVID has challenged um, using, uh, using information in our courses. So we just talked about a few scenarios of using things online like movies and eBooks. And now we're going to talk about other resources you can use to produce, to put information online for your students in case those courses are suddenly put in from in-person to online or if they're already online. So the first one is Open Educational Resources, or OER for short. So what is an OER? I just said it's an open educational resource, and these are free and openly available to educators and students. So why should you use OER courses? Or why should you use OER? OERs are really great for classroom use. Um, these are materials that are exclusively online, and they can be easily added to a Blackboard course. They can replace full textbooks. For example, you may assign a textbook in your course and you don't fully use it. You may start in chapter three, jump to chapter seven, then back to chapter one and end at chapter five. But you didn't, you only intend to use uh, pieces of that book instead of the whole book. So with OER textbooks, you can actually rearrange chapters, completely remove them, and you can build a customized textbook for your class and it will be at zero cost to the students. Um, and that's really important about textbooks is that their textbooks are already pretty expensive. And a lot of students say it's been shown that if students cannot afford a textbook, they may not take the class and they may not purchase the book. And that can greatly affect their grades. So by replacing these textbooks with OER sources, you can really impact your students' grades and their learning experience. So where can you find these OERs? Well, I recommend looking through the OER LibGuide that's available on the library website. This guide will introduce you to key elements of OER, the benefits to educators and students, and the rubrics and using to use to evaluate OERs. And there are also four sections on those resources. that includes textbooks, courses, repositories, and then student resources. And I also recommend participating in the SUNY OER community course. This link is also available on the LibGuide, and it's a self-paced course with options to join other cohorts in the SUNY system. So who can help you with OERs? Well, me. I'm the scholarly communications librarian. I can help you learn more about OERs, find where, they OE, where OERs are, and also provide assistance in creating OERs. And you can also go to Adele. She's the educational technologist. She can help you put those OERs directly into your Blackboard course, and she can make that a really good experience for you and your students. So other, um, other sources that are beyond OER 
but are still similar. Uh, these are open libraries and repositories, and many of these works are in the public domain. And again, public domain are things, are items and works that are no longer under copyright, either because it's expired, it was never renewed, or it never had copyright in the first place. So the first one is Google Books. Uh, this search is a full text of books and magazines that Google has scanned and converted to OCR. Uh, these resources have been provided by publishers, authors, and libraries. In some cases, you can download these books, but in many of the cases, Google will provide links to purchase or borrow these items. This is really good for a quick search, who said what, when, and in what book. So it's a really quick and easy way to find things. Another great source is Happy Trust. This is a large-scale collaborative repository of digital content from research libraries. It's a great place to find primary resources from other academic libraries and repositories. And then the Open Library is an online project with which lists essentially a catalog of books where you can find items including scanned versions and where to purchase the book. Uh, again, in some cases, these books are available to view completely online, but in many of the cases, it just tells you who has what book. So think of Open Library as a giant catalog. Who has what, where can you find it? And then finally, we have the Digital Public Library of America. This provides public access to digital holdings of libraries across the US. Many of these digital items are in the public domain, but others are still under copyright, so they're only available to view only. And these are, these are great for supplemental use in your classrooms, but also for your own research. If you're going to look for primary sources or sources that may have copyright on them, you can at least view them or know who to ask, who, who to ask where to find them. And I'll leave it to David now. Okay, thank you, Renee. Um, so just to go over um, our service, one of our services, Interlibrary Loan. Um, again, this is a great way to get materials for research. Uh, it's a free service provided by um, our library, and it's available to all maritime college students, faculty, and staff. Um, by using ILL, you can borrow books, <clears throat> Uh, get copies of book chapters, articles, and even uh, media like films from uh, other libraries. Um, but keep in mind, due to the current pandemic, uh, access to um, many of these lending libraries may vary as uh, other libraries are um, updating policies and changing uh, their material usage. Um, however, interlibrary loan can still be used as a last resort. Um, and uh, remember, late fees and, um, and uh, lost fees are set by, lost material fees are set by the lending library. Um, there's also a SUNY share option, which uh, will begin um, or restart uh, sometime early in the semester, but um, we'll we could uh, update you further um, after afterwards, or you can contact us. Um, next slide, please. Uh, so finally, we just want to <clears throat> plug in and talk about. Um, some of the services and resources that the library can provide. Um, of course, we have our archives and special collections, which uh, Renee can help you with, um, guiding you uh, either using resources from there or like uh, in this case for um, going over uh, OERs and um, other aspects or alternatives to using copyrighted works like textbooks. Um, of course, um, secondly, there's the Center for Teaching Excellence, and that's where Adele, our educational technologist, can help you with um, course content and um, and and I believe um, implementing uh, things on onto Blackboard. Basically, she can help you with all that. Uh, interlibrary loan, I just went over. Uh, we also have our library chat and one-on-one -on -one reference services, 
which for the most part will be virtual um, during uh, at least the fall semester of 2020. Um, we will we'll also be uh, offering library instruction um, and that is my uh, responsibility. So if you have any uh, questions about um, having library instruction virtually through Zoom, um, please contact me um, at the library and all our contact information will be um, included in our document and, uh, and at the end of this slide presentation. And finally, um, I'll go over some of the resources that um, you have access to um, on an everyday basis. You have uh, the databases A to Z, um, which uh, many of you are very familiar with. Um, there are also research tutorials. Um, we're working on this as, as we speak. Um, some new uh, libguides and a few more video tutorials which will help uh, enhance um, your learning and research experience. Um, and finally, again, subject and course libguides, uh, particular to each subject, uh, we have our liaisons and then um, we also have libguides that are designed and suited for each uh, of the subject areas. Um, and finally, um, our next slide. Thank you. Thank you for um, listening to our um, short uh, copyright presentation. And uh, hopefully this has been helpful in some way uh, and informative. Um, and, a, and I guess we can't stress enough that um, copyright is a uh, individual case by case assessment and risk assessment in particular. So please um, contact us uh, for recommendations. Um, and, um, and if we can't give you solid counsel, please speak to some of the legal counsel on campus um, who hopefully can help you. Uh, and this is our contact information. And um, check out our copyright resources document on the scholarly communications lip guide uh, under the copyright page and um, contact us at library at sunimaritime.edu as well. Thank you very much.